Welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in listen-only mode until the question and answer period. Today's webinar is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now, I'd like to turn the call over to Ms. Deb Rivera. Great. Thank you so much. Welcome and good afternoon, everyone. We appreciate and thank you for joining us today for this webinar on data.census.gov news and updates, August of 2023. My name is Deb Rivera, and I will be the host for today's event. In this webinar, we will cover some of the updates that have been implemented to data to the data search platform data.census.gov since February of this year. I want to take a moment to thank my colleagues for joining me and helping to support our speaker. We will be sharing helpful links through the chat panel and using the Q&A panel to answer your submitted questions. But before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items. We are encouraging participants to use the Q&A panel in WebEx to submit questions throughout the presentation and also to keep an eye out on the chat panel. We will use this to send links and other helpful information. If you do send a question via the Q&A panel, please make sure to use the All Panelists option, and that way all of our panelists can see your question. We will have a live question and answer session towards the end of the webinar. Participants who would like to ask a question at that time are welcome to use the raise hand icon, which appears next to your name in WebEx. To ensure that we have enough time to get to all of the participants' questions, we are asking that you please keep to the inquiries to one question and one follow-up. For additional questions, you may queue up again if time allows. And a quick note on the Q&A session, we will focus on the platform, data.census.gov. We will not be able to go in-depth to address questions on other 2020 census products, the data collection process, disclosure avoidance, or methodology. We are recording the webinar today, and all of the materials for this training will be available through the Census Academy website. Again, thank you all so much for joining us, and now I'd like to introduce our speaker, Tyson Weister. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Deb, and thank you all so much for joining the webinar this afternoon, data.census.gov news and updates. My name is Tyson Weister, and I work on the communications team for data.census.gov. What we have planned today is primarily focusing on the work that we've done to improve the site since last February. What we're going to do is show you those updates on a high level and go screen by screen to show you what those updates were and explain them. And then we're going to pick some of the most prominent of those updates and also go to the website and show them to you in real time. And then, as mentioned, we will have that period at the end for Q&A. Before we get into the updates, we did want to take a moment to thank all of the data users who have written us in with their data questions and feedback on how to make data.census.gov better. We do continuously monitor that incoming information. We prioritize the feedback, develop solutions, test those solutions, and then release updates to the public about every month or so. So with that in mind, based on the feedback that we have received, we have implemented the following sets of updates since February. Um, and these updates go through the most recent updates that have been released in August. We're also going to mix in a couple updates that are coming in about the next week or so. So on a high level, we have worked over that period of time to improve our maps, update the table controls, redesign the filter side panel, We've added a new profiles tab and made some adjustments to the profiles themselves, including deep links and bar charts. We've added new filters for international trade codes, improved search, and as always, pushed out technical updates and fixes to defects. So let's take a moment and walk through each of these in more detail. One of the most uh, one of the features that I'm most excited to share with you is the improved maps and specifically the redesigned variable selection process. So when you click into our maps now, we have a hierarchical selection of your variable. So that's what you're seeing in the top orange box here. It's going to look very similar to the table display and it makes it very easy to read the labels and make sense of what you're looking at. 
in the past when you selected variables, you would get a long non-hierarchical list that didn't make a lot of sense and took a, a lot of careful reading in order to carefully choose the variable that you were looking for. With the hierarchical display, it's easy to see what you're choosing, and then below that is where you make sense of the context of what you're picking. So you'll see a couple of options potentially available through Dimension. It's showing you the context for what you're currently viewing. In this case, the screenshot is showing that we're looking at percent below poverty level. And below that, there are options to display the information in terms of total numbers or the percent. So with this update, we default to percents when they're available for your table. We're going to walk through this in more detail so you can um, see on the live site how this works. Um, but do know that the default to percent is going to make it very easy since most of our users were mapping percentages anyways. Not only do we have the easier selection process, we also work to display the labels to you more easily once you do select one. So what you're going to see is your primary variable shown in the dark font at the top, and then the context is included below. So rather than one long string of text, we're breaking this out into manageable parts. So in this case, we're looking at data for the population under 18 years. We're looking at percent below poverty level. It's coming from the age section of the table, reflecting data for the population for whom poverty status is determined, and it's coming from the data table poverty status in the past 12 months. We mirror that improved and streamlined language to also display similarly in the map legend, as you can see in the bottom left of the screen, and we also included the year, in this case year 2021, in the legend. In addition, when you're working with the American Community Survey, we did add a new map note that explains the boundaries for Louisville and how that is reflected in the American Community Survey data and on your map. So you will see that map anytime that you select Louisville as a geography and you're clicked into an ACS data table in the corresponding map for that table. Moving on to our updated table controls, one of the most exciting things that we pushed out is that we integrated the product dropdown menu and the table header all in one. So in the past, you would have seen the product or the table header at the top, and then you would have seen an additional row below the table header with all of your buttons, your notes, geos, and other buttons to interact with the table. We've integrated this into one row at the top of your table. So it allows more space on your screen for you to interact with the table itself, see the data, um, and make sense of what you're looking at. In the example we're showing here, you can see the table header still shows you all the information that was previously provided, the table ID S1901, the table title income in the past 12 months in 2021 inflation adjusted dollars, and then in the boxes below is where it's showing you additional information. The program or survey will display, so that's what's showing for American Community Survey, and then the particular product that you're clicked into. In this case, it shows a box for 2021 ACS five-year estimate subject tables. In addition to this, some tables also have universe statements. Those will be displayed in boxes as well if one is available for the table you're clicked into. So not only does that header in the upper left function with all of that information about the table itself, it also is a product drop-down menu. So you can click into the drop-down menu arrow and then switch between the different data sets that are available to you, similar to how you could click into the past product drop-down menu that was available in the table header before. Beyond that integrated table header, we also added data set and year buttons to the top of the table and mirrored them to behave the same way that they behaved in the maps. So we received a lot of feedback from data users who were clicking into the previous survey button or the previous year button. And at that point in time, those buttons only allowed you to select something that was already um, limited to the exact table you were viewing. It didn't allow data users the options to interact with the table in the way that they thought it was intuitive. So with that in mind, the way that they behave now, when you click into the data set button, it provides the entire list of data sets that are available for that particular table ID, regardless of 
the exact one that you're currently viewing, and you can actually click any of those options and interact with the table to switch the display. Same thing for year. You can click the year button and you're not just going to see 2021. You'll see all of the available years for this table back to 2010 and you can click one of those in order to adjust the year displayed for your table. We'll take a look at this on the live site in more detail. Beyond the new changes to the table controls, we expanded the functionality that the restore button provides. This means that when you're working to apply custom filters, typically this is applicable in economic data tables where you apply custom filters to the columns of your table. When you click the restore button, it will clear out those custom filters and truly restore you back to the default table view. Um, just in keeping with the functionality that data users would expect the restore button to have. And one other minor update for the table controls for American Community Survey data tables. When you click the notes button at the top of the table, it will provide a pop-up window with the notes that are available. We did an update to make sure that the estimates were being displayed to make sure data users were given the full context for what they were looking at in the table notes. So when you are clicked into the tables, you'll see either one year or five year populated in the estimate section. Moving on to the redesign filter side panel. This is an update that will be coming in the next week or so. So you won't see it on data.census.gov today, um, but we will be able to take a preview look at this in the Canary website that we'll talk more about later. The main update with the redesign filter side panel is that the subcategories are being shown to you by default. So rather than having to click into geography in order to access these options such as nation, state, county, subdivision, place, zip code tabulation, area, etc. You are seeing those options to you right off the bat and can click directly into them on the left side panel. So this functions in two ways. It helps data users explore the options that are available and see them more easily. It also takes into consideration the feedback that we've received that navigating through the filter panels is a lot of clicks and this just helps eliminate one more click in the process. So um, the other thing that goes hand in hand with this update, um, kind of aesthetically, is we replace the folders with these chevrons. So as you're clicking through the panels, they're going to behave the same way that they do on the live site today. But um, the way that you interpret it now is any option that you see with the chevron next to it is going to give you more detailed options to choose from once you click into there. And you're ultimately still looking for check boxes as final search selections in the panel. Aesthetically, we also pushed out another update set for the side panel, specifically relating to the side panel that you see for the filters and results buttons. We widened the panel a little bit. We also changed the look of the buttons for filters and the button for results and applied some hover effects so you know what you're currently um, hovering over with your cursor. And another update is that we added county subdivision to the most common geographies. So this screenshot is showing you um, how the update is going to be reflected on the site as of next week, where you will see county subdivision included in the side panel for the geography. It just makes it easier for data users to select their town, townships, and boroughs. Um, especially for many states in the Northeast, the county subdivision is the level of geography that they're actually looking for. And sometimes people were clicking inadvertently into place and selecting the wrong geography. This helps make sure that each geography is given equal consideration and viewability for data users to get to where they want and need without it being buried under a longer list of all detailed geographies. Right, so moving away from the filter panel updates, another exciting update is that we added a dedicated tab at the top of the screen that follows you across the site specifically to access profiles. So one, it helps data users navigate more easily to profiles because they can see the tab after they've run their search, click into profiles and access the profile for their area. It's right there in your face. The other benefit of this 
particular update is that it allows us to not only give us our one recommendation for the best profile, but we can give you a list of profiles related to your search that we think you may be interested in. So the way you're gonna see this on the site, in this example of the screenshot, I've run a search for Maryland. There's a list of 27 profiles, of course, providing you the, the suggested profile for the state of Maryland would make the most sense, but we also suggest that lower level geographies, so all of Maryland's 26 counties below. When you open the profiles themselves, we added the ability for you to create a link that will navigate users to a particular section of the profile. So as an example, this link is generated when you either click the tab at the top of the profile, or if you hover over the section heading and click the link icon. When you make either of those clicks, you'll see that the URL at the top of your address bar will have characters added to it to reflect this particular section of the profile. It just means that when you share the profile, again, your users will get navigated to this section rather than the very top of the profile. And specifically within the marital status and marital history section of the geography profiles, we also updated the content of the visualization to change it into a bar chart format. It allows us to provide more relevant and meaningful information to you. Moving away from profiles, we also added new international trade filters. So this means that when you are in the code section of the filter panel, you're going to see categories for seven new areas, harmonized system import, harmonized system export, end use import, end use export, advanced technology products, standard international trade classification, and United States Department of Agriculture. So the way that they behave on the site as of now, if you click into any of these primary categories, you're not gonna be able to move any further today. However, once we add the international trade data that these codes are designed to support and interact with, you will be able to see and use the codes and select filters and checkboxes for these particular categories. So all this to say that we have made some steps in supporting future releases of those data sets. We also made some updates to our search. Specifically, we've added better messaging when no data tables are found. So if you run a search that is a legitimate recognized search term, for instance, you can see I've typed 812912 in the single search bar and it's pulled up on the upper left a matching filter for pet care. So while that is a legitimate search and filter, we don't currently have any data tables that support that particular filter option. So we give you a null results found message. Just to clarify, there's nothing wrong with your search, but we don't have data tables to match. And we also made an update to the type ahead search results. You now only have to type a minimum of two characters into the single search bar in order to get that pop-up window that starts suggesting uh, results that you might wanna search. In the past, you had to type a minimum of three characters, and this is particularly useful when users are searching by table ID or table prefix to help get them to what they're looking for. In addition, we provided a lot of technical updates that are behind the scenes during this period since February. Some of that work is to allow searches for world geographies to support international data sets. We updated the suggested search results that appear in the pop-up window for the type ahead search suggestions. We improved the ability for external search engines to make sense of the content on data.census.gov so they can link to our site more easily. We have done some work to the single search to support future improvements when you search ambiguous terms that could have multiple meanings and then processes as well. And as always, we fix a number of defects with each release. Since February, we've fixed a total of 141 defects. I'll pause for just a moment on the screen here. And if you'd like to learn even more about the defects that were fixed, you can visit the link at the bottom. All right, so moving on to the live demonstration so we can show you a handful of these most prominent updates in real time. 
We are going to be working with the site data.canary.census.gov. This is a public site, so you are able to access this URL as well. And it's specifically designed to help you preview upcoming developments. So it's that set of updates loaded in right now that we plan to release in the next week or so, but haven't gone to the public data.census.gov site. It's designed so you can get an early look and give us feedback. With that in mind, the set of updates that are in that site that you won't see on data.census.gov until next week are that redesigned filter side panel, the new profiles tab, and some of the improved map labeling. So that's why we're going to be visiting that site today to help you keep up with the latest of what is coming up through next week. And specifically, I wanted to show you the redesigned filter side panel and the table toolbar updates first. So for this example, I am going to pull up income data in Iowa and Congressional District 1, Iowa, in data.canary.census.gov. So all you need to do is type in data.canary.census.gov into the URL, and it will take you to this preview site. We are going to click the advanced search link just below the single search bar. And on the left-hand side is where you're going to see that change that's coming soon. It's the redesigned filter panel. So for context, if you visit the filter panel today, you're only going to see these primary categories on data.census.gov. With the update that's coming next week, you'll notice that all of the subcategories are provided to you by default. So the way this works for geography is you're going to see what we consider to be the most commonly used geographies shown to you by default and a list to access all geographies at the very bottom. So we wanted Iowa and Congressional District. On the left-hand side, I'll click State, and then I'll choose the checkbox for Iowa. So we see the checkbox in the upper left. It's registered that final selection. And then looking to the left, notice that we don't see Congressional District as a available subcategory. It's not a most commonly used geography. However, you can access the full list by clicking the All Geographies option. And then we get an alphabetized list of every possible geographic level to choose from at the Census Bureau. We have hundreds of different levels that are categorized in different ways. So what we'll do is scroll to the Congressional District section in this list and follow the prompts. We get a chevron, so that tells me when I click Congressional District, I'll get options to choose from. I'll choose Iowa, and then I see individual checkboxes. I'll mark Congressional District 1, Iowa. And then similarly, on the left-hand side, we will scroll down and choose our topic. So under Topics, you see the different subcategories. We wanted Income, so I'm going to choose the Income and Poverty subcategory. Again, we're looking for a checkbox as a final selection. I'm going to choose income and earnings and then choose income, households, families, individuals. Once we're happy with our search criteria, I have two geographies and topics. I'll go ahead and click search in the lower right. And then I'm going to choose tables at the top. So there are 432 different table results for my set of filters. So what I can do is look at the first one, S1901, income in the past 12 months in 2021, inflation adjusted dollars. And primarily I'd like to take this time to show you the table toolbar updates at the top. So again, we see the table ID, S1901 and table title. We see the context that comes from the American Community Survey 2021 ACS one year estimate subject tables. You can click on the arrow or anywhere in this header at the top in order to activate the product drop-down menu. So if we wanted to switch from ACS one-year to five-year estimates, um, you can make that selection here in the window that popped up. And notice after we've made that click in the box below in the table header, it now says ACS five-year. Also wanted to show you the data set anchor button. These work similarly to switch between the different products that are available. If we click into data set, we can choose all of the different vintages that are available. For instance, we can choose um, 
2019 ACS one year estimate subject tables. And if you'd like to same product, you can click into the year button at the top, for example. So these data set and year buttons, again, in previous versions of the site, you were not able to interact with them in a meaningful way, and you can now use them to switch between the different years and products available. Moving on to our second example, we'd like to take a moment to show you the redesigned map variable selection process. For this example, I'm going to pull up a table with percent of people under 18 below poverty. For all states, we're going to be using data.canary.census.gov once again. So going back to the live site, we'll click in the upper left on the U.S. Census Bureau logo. And then we'll uh, click into the single search bar, and I'm just going to type in poverty all states. And then press enter to run the search. So ultimately, I'm going to be showing you the updated map process. Um, the process leading up to creating a map hasn't changed, though. So all of our maps continue to be table-based. That means you can map any estimate that you see in our data tables. It does mean that I continue to recommend that you take a look at the table first and then create a map afterwards. So just like we've always done, I'm going to click Tables at the top and take a moment to browse and find the table that contains the estimate that I want to make a map of and also look at the layout of the table itself. So the first one, S1701, poverty status in the past 12 months, we'll take a look at this table across our full screen. We see in the column, Alabama is our geography. And for Alabama, there is a total of three columns. So the first column is for the total number of people. The second column is for the total number of people below the poverty level. And then the third column is for percent below poverty level. After that third column, we see we get these data for each of our other states as we scroll right and left on the table. Uh, but moving back, we wanted to look at percent. And we wanted percent poverty not for the total population, but for the population under 18 years. So looking on the left is where you see the different variables from the table. And we can see the second row that has data values in it is for under 18 years. So in Alabama, we're seeing that 22.2% of people under 18 years old live in poverty. So great that we have this in a table format. We know that this table contains the estimate that we want to map out, but we want to see all of our values in a map. So once you get to this step, just like before, now would be a good time to click the Maps tab at the top. You want to make sure on the left-hand side that you're still clicked into the table that has the data you want to make a map of. And then your map has been set to state level boundaries. And then the last thing that we need to do is tell the site out of all of the variables and data cells in that table, which one do we want shown on the map across all states. So this is where the process is new, is you click into the upper left. You can click anywhere that you see the label or the drop down arrow, and you'll be able to navigate between the different options. One thing, you may need to adjust your zoom level on your browser. I like to do that using Control plus or Control minus. That will allow you to see more of this variable drop down menu at a time. So whatever you're comfortable with, but did want to point that out. Notice at the very top that we're getting a hierarchical list. So the left hand side of the table had the data laid out in the same exact way that we're seeing the variable list laid out here. So we wanted under 18 years. And below that, we see the dimension is automatically set percent below poverty level estimate, and then it's defaulting to percent. The variables will default to percent if percentages are provided in the corresponding data table. Um, but to see in full context how you can map out all three different columns, this setting right here would be mapping out the third column of the table. If you click the units to number, You'll see the total estimate, and it also is a drop-down menu at this point. So this is the first column of the table. 
And if you click dimension and choose below poverty level estimate, that would be giving you data for the total number of people who live below the poverty level, which was the second column of the table. So do always pay attention to the dimensions and units to make sure you're capturing the full context of what you're creating a map of. I'm going to click back to percent. And then from here, you're simply choosing the hierarchical label just as you found it in the table. So we choose the second option under 18 years. And that's how easy it is to make our map. A lot more readable than it was before without having those long um, list of items to, to look through. Also pointing in the upper left again, we're seeing that simplified labeling with under 18 years, percent below poverty level, age, population for whom poverty status is determined. It's a lot easier to read broken out into those parts. You can look on the map and see that states with darker shades of blue have higher percent of people under the age of 18 living in poverty, and you can click an individual um, state on the map in order to see the data for that state. And the last thing I wanted to show you on the live site is the new profile tab. And we're going to show this both for geography profiles and for grocery profiles. So I'm going to do Maryland search and a grocery store search. Back on the live site, we'll click the U.S. Census logo in the upper left. And I'm just going to type Maryland into the single search bar and press enter. So there all are multiple ways to navigate to the geography profile that still remain valid with this release. What I want to show you is the new tab at the top that says profiles. This is where it is going to give you the top recommended profile. We see the state profile and some featured statistics at a glance. And then when you scroll down, you see that same recommendation at the top along with the lower level geography. So in this case, the next lower level is county. So it gives you all 26 counties in Maryland to choose from if you'd like to explore those profiles or just be aware that we have profiles at that level of geography. At this point, I'm going to open up the profile and show you some of those updates. As it begins to load, we didn't make a ton of changes to the content of the profiles. But remember, when you scroll through, you'll see different headings at the top. You can click one of the headings, such as families and living arrangements. When you make that click, notice that these characters were added to the URL. In case you share the link, it will take the data user to this section of the profile. And then within this section of the profile, there is a new bar chart in the marital status section. So scrolling down, you'll see the new bar chart. It shows you the percentage of people who were never married in Maryland at the top, and then it breaks out marital status by sex in the bar chart below. Clicking the U.S. Census logo in the upper left, we do have profiles available for industry codes as well. So here I'm going to type in grocery stores, which corresponds to NAICS 4451 and press enter. And then looking at the top, there is the profiles tab. So I want to click here and show you when you search in industry, how this tab behaves. Just like before, you're going to get the top recommendation at your screen. So in this case, 4451 grocery stores, same thing below. In this case, we get a list of three profiles to choose from, and it's giving us the lower level industry NAICS codes. So it's giving us the profile option for the five-digit level of NAICS. In this case, one category being supermarkets, another grocery, except convenience stores, and then a category for convenience stores. So kind of similar to geography, it gives you a list with the primary recommendation as well as the next lower level geography recommendation. All right, so we hope you explore some of those updates on data.canary.census.gov and write us in with your feedback ahead of the release. In the future, we are working towards implementing new updates to improve the site, including a landing page redesign, continue to improve search, and incorporate other user feedback we receive.
As we start transitioning to your questions, we did want to let you know that you can sign up for data.census.gov email updates. We encourage you to visit the link on this slide or take a picture of the QR code in the upper right. That will take you to our email subscription page where you can type in your email address and check the box for data.census.gov updates. It will include a subscription to our monthly newsletter that will alert you to the latest system enhancements, educational opportunities, and data releases on data.census.gov. And we'd like to thank all of our users who have given us feedback in the past and encourage you to continue to write us in with your ideas on how we can make data.census.gov work better for you, as well as your data questions, simply click the feedback link under the single search bar or shoot us an email to census.data at census.gov. And we to Deb before we start opening up for your questions. Great, thank you so much, Tyson. Okay, so um, in a few moments, we will begin our question and answer session. So here are the instructions. Today, we will be taking your questions over the WebEx audio. So if you have questions related to today's content, we invite you to queue up and use the raise hand icon that is located next to your name in WebEx. Now, when we call your name, you will then need to unmute yourself to ask your question. Be aware that there may be a little bit of a lag once you unmute yourself, and then you're going to be able to ask your question. As a reminder, we also ask that you keep your questions to one question, so just so we can allow more time for others in the queue. Now, before we move on to the Q&A, I would also like to invite you all to give us your thoughts on today's webinar through an evaluation survey. If you have any notes for us to help improve these webinars, or if you have any ideas on other topics that you would like to see us cover in the future, please take a moment to fill out this survey. I'm going to go ahead and send out all of those details in the chat. Now, if you have any questions remaining after our session concludes today, please feel free to reach out to one of the two or three email inboxes that you see here. If you are a member of the public, you can reach out to the Center for Enterprise Dissemination to either questions and feedback at census.data at census.gov or training requests at sed.sedsci.outreach at census.gov. And if you are a member of the media, please contact the Public Information Office at PIO at census.gov. So with that, I will go ahead and invite all of you, if, I, if you have any questions and you would like to ask them over the line, please go ahead and use the raise hand icon so that we can transition over um, to take your questions. I'll turn it over to Tyson while we wait for questions to come in. And uh, as we're waiting for those questions to come in, we did want to point out our data.census.gov resources page. You can visit the link in the upper left or click the help button underneath the single search bar in order to access our resources page. This is a one-stop shop for you to access all things data.census.gov, including short videos, full-length webinars, uh, workshops, as well as information about upcoming data releases and how-to materials with step-by-step -step PDFs. Um, and by the way, when you do visit this website and access our workshops, those are hands-on opportunities for you to learn how to use data.census.gov. We offer them each month and have five different topics. There's basic, advanced, and mapping for data.census.gov. There is a microdata access tool workshop and an application programming interface workshop. Thank you, Tyson. I'll go ahead and send out those links in the chat as well in case anybody is interested. I don't see that we have any questions that are coming in um, over the line, but we did receive a couple of questions over the chat um, that I'd like to um, present to you. Perhaps it might help somebody who's listening. The first question is, <clears throat> does this update let me search for an industry or product under codes? 
instead of having to drill down to show that industry or product name or code. I am not sure if I understand the question. So if the person that asked it could raise their hand or put information in the chat. Otherwise, we would encourage you to write us in. I apologize. Oh, OK. Um, let's go ahead. I see that she's queued up. So let's go ahead and unmute Jennifer's line, please. For Voucher, and it was answered in the Q&A. But like when you search for pet care, you can't search by the NAICS code or pet care in the advanced search or even when you go to searches. The only way to get to that industry is if you have to drill down, pass down to the six digit or five digit to have it in the, the screen for you to get that data out. And Maria, who was wonderful, said that she's going to put that in as a feedback. Got it. I appreciate that feedback for search. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you for the question, Jennifer. Really appreciate it. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody else queued up, Tyson. I'm wondering if you might be able to answer this question as well. The question reads, are you now distributing USDA data? Great, thanks for that question. So in regards to the updates that I showed where there was USDA codes, that is for international trade data based on USDA agricultural product codes. So the USDA is um, who's in charge of classifying what those products are, um, but the data is for import, export, international trade data. And that's data, again, the international trade data is not currently on our site, but will be coming in the future. Thank you, Tyson. Okay, and this is one last question that we got from the Q&A panel, and it reads, how much of the profile at the county level can be broken out by race and ethnicity? Yeah, thanks for the question. So currently all the profiles have the same um, information for level of detail for geography as long as that estimate is provided for that level. Um, so at the county level, what you're going to get for race and ethnicity right now in the profile view are counts of the different race and ethnic groups, and it's based on the 2020 census. So these are also classified at the high level race and ethnicity groups. So you're talking white alone, black or African American alone, Asian alone, American Indian, Alaska Native alone, some other race alone, two or more races, and then there's also Hispanic or Latino data. So I'm going to give it a shot and see if we can't load it here quickly on screen. With that said, though, do keep in mind that our data tables provide information for detailed race groups. You can look at characteristics of groups. You can look at percentages. You can look at income, educational attainment, health insurance, all kinds of different great information, both for these high-level groups that we're showing here and more detailed groups such as Japanese or um, Navajo as some examples. But in the profile view, you can see on the left-hand side, it shows you the total counts. Thank you, Tyson. And I'm so sorry, we did get just one more question. Um, and it reads, will the changes that you showed in data.canary be in place by the time you release this year's poverty data on September 12th and 14th? Uh, as it currently stands, the updates that I showed today are expected to go live next week. So at this time, our plan would be yes, that those updates would be in place before the dates that were mentioned for the release. Great. Thank you, Tyson. All right. And we have a question from Arthur. Can we go ahead and unmute Arthur's line, please?
Hi, Tyson. Thanks for today. This was a great comprehensive update. I'm a new user, so this is my first webinar call, and this might be too elementary of a question if you just want to point me somewhere else. But I'm trying to use the advanced search filter and get down to the right data set for, uh, a, for area median income by county in my state of Florida and Georgia, and I'm struggling to find the, uh, the correct one to use. Is that data that I would find in here? Yeah, thanks for your question. So we have data for median household income. Um, I think sometimes area median income is also tied to another analysis of census data. So you might want to write us in with your question. Um, but with that said, I would be happy to show you really quickly on how to access median household income data at the county level um, using okay. filters that we showed earlier. Um, similarly, on the left, you would choose county and ultimately select any county. And then I didn't really take a detailed look at the data table, but you would choose the same income filter that I showed earlier on the left for income poverty, income earnings, and income, households, families, individuals. So there are multiple data tables that provide median income. I'm going to click tables at the top. And then the first table, this was actually the table that we were looking at, um, but you can see median incomes provided in S1901. It's provided in B19013. Several tables you can get median income from. This one at the very top shows households as a column and provides household income distributions. But when you scroll down just a little bit more, you can look at median income row and look at it. Households would be most popular. And then there's families and married couple families. Ah, okay. That's excellent. Yeah, and if you have additional excellent. questions, Thank you. feel free to write us in and we'll be happy to give you more guidance. I sure will. I appreciate the help. You're welcome. Thank you, Tyson, and thank you, Arthur, for that question. <clears throat> I am not seeing any additional questions coming in through the line. Um, thank you all so much for your questions. I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Tyson. Great. Thanks, Deb. I did want to share one last resource as we wrap up, and that is our data dissemination and training. We have the centralized training hub at the Census Bureau at census.gov slash academy. So this is your go-to source for all things census data training. Um, it will provide training and resources, not just related to data.census.gov, but to all different types of tools, topics, and data sets at the Census Bureau. In addition to that training hub, there are local data dissemination specialists assigned to each state. So if you would are working for a local organization and would like a training, you can reach out to them at census.askdata at census.gov or by contacting 1-844-ASK-DATA. Thank you all so much again for tuning into the webinar. We hope to see you again in the future and look forward to hearing from you.